that, Zarell. I had some leftover bean soup heated up in an old Cool Whip container for supper. What about Jody Arias? Well, Nancy, tonight Jody Arias has a feast that includes soy lentils, mashed potatoes, spinach, orange, a dinner Can roll. Can you go a little a slower? I want to take it all in. Okay. Soy lentils, mashed potatoes, spinach, an orange, which I hope is fresh, a dinner roll, and Nancy, your favorite, a donut. She had a freaking donut. All right. She slashed his throat from ear to ear, and she's kicked back with a Krispy Kreme. All right, she needs to go back on trial. Heard you say Jody Arias cried in front of the jury. Joe. Well, yes. sir, you're off. Cut his mic. Thank you. How often is it that women drop charges against their lovers, their boyfriends, their husbands, their exes? Tell me the truth. Pretty frequently, particularly when they're lying in the 911 calls. That was the most rehearsed, orchestrated, prepared bit of nonsense I'd ever heard in my life. Jason Lamb, why, why are you shaking your head yes like you because were there Nancy, on the scene? You know when what? We are on there, the same page. He had a long gun. He had a long gun. You can hear him in the background. All the items that she was talking about he was breaking were broken. I'm sorry. So did, I didn't I hear anything breaking. Him? I didn't hear anything breaking in the background. I didn't say that. I didn't say you could hear it. All right, I, Nancy, I think you're he, probably he, hearing yourself talking no, more no, than no, anything I'm, else. I'm hearing you talking. Liz, can you just cut her mic for a minute? Because, Nancy, the fact is, this is a he said, she said case. And you know, as a former prosecutor, Don't start with how me about tough what it I is. Know. Well, how tough is it to go a up there and is. impeach your key witness? You okay, have to get on. up there as a prosecutor uh, and say your Jason witness is Lamb, lying. defense attorney, no, uh, that never happened to me in court. I never had that problem. Maybe you two have to impeach your own witnesses. I never had that problem. Per view way, and I think that's what Nancy's talking about. Nancy actually interviewed someone on her show mm -hmm. who was talking about the fact that they found this video in a pay-per-view site. That's the only way that Casey Anthony's going to end up making money, in my view. That's true. And Nancy, didn't the person that you talked to, he saw it for free because he didn't even want to pay for it. And then he was the one that put it on right. YouTube. Yeah, he has a website, I believe, called BoycottCaseyAnthony.com. His name is John Briley out of Ohio. And at first, you know, he was trolling the Internet. He found it where he said he, he was offered to pay two or three bucks. And he kept looking, and he found it for free. And then he immediately downloaded it, and then the website went away. The link went away almost immediately after, which is not uncommon. But, uh, uh, of course, she leaked it for monetary gain. She's stirring up interest in herself. Remember, she's been shopping a $750,000 deal about herself. We learn about tedious audio recordings, as she calls in. Who's making audio recordings? What, for a book? Like, I'm going to buy that? I guess not. Or a made-for-TV movie. But we learn a lot about her, not only her self-interest, yeah, which you already know about, but, I mean, the I look, come it, on, Nancy, Dan, Nancy, you had to I, I notice I, I, the low-cut shirt, it, the tie, yeah. the hair. I, I don't think it increases the value, though, for her to come out and show people no, how she's looking, et doesn't. cetera. Right? So, so if she's doing it for monetary, why wouldn't she wait? I mean, Dan, you're right. Why buy the cow when you can get the milk for free? <laughs> right. Why give her a TV deal when right. she's posting and, and, and this by the stuff way, online? The, 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 but she doesn't know that. The guy you interviewed on your show is boy, the boycott yeah. Casey Anthony. If his whole thing is about boycotting yeah. Casey Anthony, then why is he publicizing this? I mean, he's the one who comes so forward on your show. So she can make money off of it, ding, ding. Well, so but, she but can he's, make but, $2 but then, a But then hit. you know what? If using your theory, he's now helped her. Right? He's now helping her publicize well, he stopped in the her from boycott making that Casey two Anthony dollars. Effort. No, well, I think I know hey, what Nancy's point here. Hey, he saved me from having to pay two yeah. bucks. Right, because instead well, of the I, person paying two dollars, they well, can now go to YouTube right. and see it for free. But uh, exactly. Love seeing, uh, yeah. But the thing is that if she is trying to help her image, and we heard that Nancy said how many times she counted, she talked about herself, did not mention yeah. her daughter once.
But look, I'm not going to defend Casey or her Anthony, parents, all right? or but, her brother. But this is this is a video diary that is clearly being used. Either let's assume, it's not it, let's a assume diary. It's either for I'd right, find whatever it is. It's either for Who purposes puts on here of makeup to write in their diary. Let, let's even assume it's for publicity, right? Let's assume it's for publicity purposes. Yeah. If it's for publicity purposes, if it's to put her back in the public eye. Then she's not going to end up talking about did. her daughter. She's not going to. I mean, it's a no. That's a no-win situation. I thought she if you view this, a baby. if you view this as I a commercial, out. if you view this as a commercial endeavor, there's no way she's going to end up talking about her and daughter. And her parents are, are are genuinely concerned about her safety, Nancy and Dan, because people now are looking they at are. the video and trying to get clues as to where she is. Isn't that right? Yeah, and she's well, also saying well, she's, she's going to be at that same Florida, place for six months. And I think she is in Florida, but I would like to find out. And another thing, a clue we see is this that was clearly edited. Even I, with an untrained eye, and I brought in a specialist, can see that at certain points the audio is edited and possibly even the video. Why do you so want to find out so badly where she is? Personal diary. Yeah. All right, you two. All yeah. right. <laughs> Nancy, thank you. Thank you very much for being with us. Have a good weekend there in Atlanta, Dan. As Thanks, always. Thanks, guys. You, 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 you I was very quiet growing up as a child. I would say it was a traditional Southern childhood. Nancy Grace is no typical Southern belle. Anything and a call on the head, no. And She's a crusading prosecutor. She's tried 70 cases and hasn't lost one yet. Where the gun was stolen? Killers, rapists, pimps, punks. She's put them all away. I left in the armed robbery, the burglary, the rape. I really think that one person can make a difference. Not a big difference, but a difference. What he did with a pistol. Nancy Grace is Atlanta's Steel Magnolia with a nickname. Amazing Grace. Well, I believe with redemption, I'm just not concerned with it. <laughs> I believe, I'm sure that the Lord will redeem these people. But uh, not on my victim's time. <laughs> Lady Justice. She's always symbolized how the scales tip. Yet justice has generally been a man's world. But a new breed of women has tackled America's crime wars. Prosecutors making an impact on the criminal justice system. Avenging angels who'd rather bust bad guys than earn big fees defending them. This time, Atlanta prosecutor Nancy Grace is pursuing an accused killer, Atlanta millionaire Wayne Carr. The charge? He burned down his house to cover up the murder of his wife, Pat Carr. She planned to leave him. I know she did not have the strength to ever break away from her murderer. I really believe that I did have the strength to do that for her. Carr denies killing his wife, calling the 3 a.m. fire an accident. He said he tried to save her, but she fought him, and he scrambled out a window without her. Only tests showed Pat Carr suffered a curious blow to the head. You're saying he hit her in the head and right, knocked her out. Right, 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 right up here. To recreate the fire, Grace used a smoke machine and tried a bedroom window the suspect said got stuck that night. No problem. She has no witnesses, only circumstantial evidence. But hunting motive, the prosecutor uncovered that Carr had once hit his wife and tapped her phone. But it would be 10 times worse if we, if we did get found out. Grace also learned not only did Pat Carr plan to leave her husband, but was having an affair with a family friend, Bruce Broadhurst. Hopefully I can see it tomorrow. I have to tell you, the defendant left a track a mile wide. Hot air. Cheap theatricals. Nancy Grace has left tracks, too, across the backs of some of Atlanta's toughest lawyers. They give her high marks for homework. Probably her greatest strength is the ability to put together the facts of a case. Veteran criminal lawyer Jack Martin defended Wayne Carr. Which he suffered through himself, he's going to spectate. The other side of the coin is he's this incredibly flamboyant lawyer in the courtroom who uh, is constantly posturing and playing to the jury. Do you think the state's heart is stone? Acting like she's this little lost lamb. 
who in court plays Southern Belle to the max, beehive hair, drawl and all. Y'all, you can look at it and see some, even I, with my naked, untrained eyes, can look at it. I don't play on anything. I am a woman and I am from the South. I think most female lawyers would be embarrassed to act like Nancy Grace does in the courtroom. It is what you believe in your head and in your heart. If they have sour grapes, Art, they can just chew on them. You can see. In her crusade to convict Wayne Carr of murder, Grace lays out her case for arson, reenacting how she believes Carr started the fire that night using a flammable liquid. There's water on the floor. You can see it. Then she makes the victim come alive for the jury. You heard that she had been shoved, had been punched, had been slapped. I can't believe you can turn away from all the planning and all the scheming he did to kill Miss Carr. Even critics say Grace has a special way with victims, that their pain fuels her passion for justice. What she's never told other lawyers until now is why she feels so close to victims. She has been one. Keith Griffin was a baseball star at Valdosta State in South Georgia. Nancy Grace was the sorority girl with every girl's dream. Her own family, children, a life together with a man she loved. When I saw him for the first time, he had the most beautiful blue eyes ever. And I thought, oh, that is the most wonderful person and I'm in love with him. And then in one fell swoop, everything changed. All my plans for the rest of my life changed. In one life-altering moment, 26-year-old Keith Griffin was gunned down by a criminal on parole. A random act of violence. Like every other murder victim's family, um, I will never get over it. For Nancy Grace, the justice system had failed. If Keith's killer had been in jail, this would never have happened. You sound very angry at the system. I am the system. I am part of the system. And it failed that time, and I hate to see it ever fail again. Nancy Grace was just 21 when her fiancé was murdered. She left school and abandoned a dream to become an English professor. She was lost for two years until she found law school, got a job prosecuting criminals, and gave up her life as a victim. I have to say that becoming a prosecutor and caring about my cases and letting that be the focus of my life has been like a tonic. It's been a cure. The when it's trial time, Nancy Grace shuts out everything. Friends, family, nothing matters yes. but the case. We have had people working overtime, triple time, weekends, unpaid, nothing in it for any of us, except we believe he killed her. Convict him. And will you publish the verdict, Ms. Gray? It took the jury less than two hours to find Carr guilty. As to count one malice murder, we, the jury, found the defendant, Weldon Wayne Carr, guilty. Find Carr guilty of arson. Convicted of killing his wife. I'm very pleased with the verdict. I'm very For Atlanta's star deputy district attorney, it's another big win. That was you I seen on TV last night. And big headlines the next day. Nancy, congratulations. Then it was back to the office to bask in fleeting glory and pick up her next case. In a career, she says, that gives her life meaning and motive. When it comes down to it, it's you in the courtroom. And uh, it is on your shoulders to follow things through and to seek what is right. Went and got the gun and shot her. I am happy that I get to touch people and help people 
and do something right.